And what I'm going to be talking about today is something, I guess, quite specific. I don't have any slides or anything, so I'm just going to quickly walk through uh, some of the things that you might be interested in if you are looking to accept payments within an application. Now, I know I've already talked to a few of you who are interested to know. Um, and if I don't, if I'm not clear throughout the session, like feel free to just catch me as well. I'll be here the rest of the night. Um, so, so this is. So, how many of you have heard of Braintree? So, for those who haven't, it's uh, essentially a. It, it's a startup that's headquartered in Chicago, um, and it's a payments platform that enables developers to easily accept payments within their apps. Uh, so, either web apps or mobile applications. And then it was acquired by Brain uh, by PayPal about uh, ha one and a half years ago. Um, and now it's available in this part of the world as well, in the three countries, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Malaysia. So if you're a merchant that is looking to accept payments within, and you're based in one of these three countries, then you'll be able to use Braintree. Um, as a customer, you'll be able to pay from anywhere. So those countries are only restricted to uh, where the merchant is based and where they have their bank accounts, basically. So the way it works, um, really quickly going into the technical details. It's basically, it, it's actually really simple. So there's only three to four basic steps that you have to do uh, in order to have, in order to start accepting payments within your application. So for every application that, that wants to use Braintree, you'll need to have both a client side and a server side. Now client side is obviously your iOS app. And then the server side, um, it's pretty much available in any server language that's available today. Like, uh, JavaScript, Ruby, Python. We have SDKs for each of those server languages. And when your application first starts, all it needs to do is request for a token from your server. And there is a server SDK function that just basically generates a token, and you pass it back to your application. And with a token, you can then set up your application. And this basically tells Braintree to associate your application with your Braintree account. And once you have that set up, the client-side SDK, the cool thing about the client-side SDK is that the whole interface for um, developing a credit card form, for example, is already provided to you. So you don't actually have to go through all the building the UI yourself, like putting in text fields, putting in the credit card validations. Everything's all provided for you. And you just need to call the form when you're ready to accept money. And once your form shows up, the user goes in. They can log in to pay through PayPal. They can just, log, uh, they can just put in their credit card numbers. And once they click pay, Everything is all done by the SDK. It tokenizes all of that credit card data into a, what we call a nonce. And this nonce is important because as a merchant, you don't want to be handling any of that sensitive credit card details because there are compliance issues uh, that you have to, you know, you have to be PCI compliant basically to be able to handle all that sensitive data. But with the solution here to tokenize that credit card information, you're not actually touching the credit card details. So that liability is on us who are the SDK providers and not you. So you don't have to go through the trouble to be uh, PCI compliant. So once you have the nonce, you call a server-side SDK function to say, I want to charge this nonce, or which is basically this payment method, X amount of dollars, $10, $20, whatever you'd like. And Braintree will do all that uh, transaction for you. So it'll charge it from the credit card. And then within uh, three, three business days, it'll be settled into your bank account as well. So let me just quickly show you a demo of how this looks like. Um, what I have here on the client side, I have my very, very, very basic uh, iOS app. And on the server side, I'm using uh, Node. I'm running Node. So I have a JavaScript. Uh, let's see where it is. Uh, yeah. So this is basically my, this is the core file, basically. So it is, let me try to. Make the font bigger. So this, these are basically the keys that you get from your uh, control panel once you have a Braintree account. So if I log in here and I go to account user, and then view authorizations. And depending on what uh, server-side language you're using, you can just select it right here. I'm using Node and just copy. And this is basically my credentials. So I just need to paste it in here. So remember, I was, I was talking about how you need, your server basically needs to provide two functions. One is to serve the client token to your client, to your iOS app. And the other one is to take a payment method nonce and then use Braintree to charge that payment method. So the first uh, route I have here is just to get token. 
And once the request comes in, I'm just using the Braintree SDK, which is the gateway I've declared here, and to generate a client token and then send it back as a response. So it's really that simple. And then on the client side here, you'll see that uh, I only have one view controller here. So when my view controller loads, uh, let me increase the font here. Um, I'm currently using, there's a, you just basically use like CocoaBots. We also have Carter support as well. Um, but I'm using CocoaBots here to install Braintree. And I'm using a Lomo Fire to make the request. And you basically just create your client. And then, as you can see here, when my view controller starts, um, the only button I have is the pay button. And I'm here, to, I'm disabling the pay button here because I don't want the user to be able to click on it before. Um, the application is able to authorize itself against Braintree. Um, so you want to, as a best practice, you want to enable it only after you've set up everything correctly, or else things can go wrong. So I'm just making a request to my local server to get the token, um, and then the response comes in as a client token, and I set up the client, the Braintree client, and, it sh and just initialize it with a client token. So at this point, the iOS client knows that this application corresponds to my Braintree account, because I have those credentials in there as well. So the exciting part here is when the user presses the pay button, um, and as you can see, I only have one view controller here, and I don't need a separate interface for my credit card form, and that's really the beauty of it. So all I need to do is just create a what we call a drop-in view controller, and it's from the client SDK, and it basically just embeds itself into your current UI. So it, you can declare it as a view controller and then push it onto your uh, UI stack. So right here, I'm just, it's a navigation controller. Um, so I'm just creating the drop-in controller, setting the delegate to myself so I can get the callbacks. And I am just presenting the UI controller, and that's all. So as part of the uh, delegate, uh, delegate protocol, I am just implementing two functions. One is when the user goes through the whole flow, and then I get the nonce back, so the payment was successful. And the other one is if the user cancels the payment. So simple, simply enough, if the user cancels it, I just dismiss the controller and go back to my application. Um, and if it succeeds, the SDK will pass me back a nonce, which is that string that represents the payment method. And I just post it to my server. And the server will take that string and create a transaction against it, a, a charge against it. And I dismiss the controller. So let's quickly see this uh, in action here. Uh, so I'm just going to run my server here and my iOS app. <laughs> so it's just a let me pay button. So at this point, because it's already enabled, so I've already gone through the getting the token. And I can check um, in the log as well. So I've already sent a token on the server side. And then if I just click pay, you see that controller that just popped up? Um, it's actually from, so it's from the client SDK. I didn't have to create any of this. And the drop-in UI has all the credit card validations as well, so, and the credit card type detection. So I don't actually, as a user, you don't have to select what payment method you're using, what credit card you're using. It's auto-detecting. So if it starts with 3.7, it's American Express, or 401 is a Visa. And if the credit card number is invalid, it does inline validation as well. So it lets the user know right away. So everything is, it comes for free, basically. And then the expiration date, and I'm just using uh, a fake CVV. And if I just click pay here, you'll see that um, the transaction is actually created. So I've, I've already gotten the nonce and passed it to my server. And the server here, I'll just show you the code. Uh, just takes the nonce right here and then charges it $4 and then prints the result. Now the result is this, and it's basically like a receipt. So it gives you all the information about the transaction details. So it's been authorized, it's been charged $4, um, and then you have the option to also pass information like the customer ID so that you can save uh, the payment methods that they've used. And the next time they come back, it's already been set up. Um, if you use apps like uh, Uber. Uber uses Braintree. So once you have your credit card added on there, you don't need to go back to it again. So it's really, really convenient for the users. 
and transaction comes through, and then I can immediately go to my dashboard, and you can verify that the transaction has come in. So I've done a few tests today, so that's how much you get directly. Now this is just um, being authorized. The transaction takes about, uh, we, we, it's about three, bit within three business days is when it goes into your bank account. So when it gets settled and then deposited into your bank account, bank account <coughs> that you've got linked to the Braintree account. Now, in addition to just simple transactions, we also support uh, subscriptions as well. So if you want to charge the user on a recurring basis, weekly, monthly, um, yearly, for example, you can do discount plans as well. All the calculation is done on the Braintree side, so you don't have to write logic. Um, say if a user switches their billings, uh, they switch their tier plan, um, the grade level, midway, Braintree will do all the prorating for you uh, and handle everything for you. And then if you have expiring cards as well, Braintree will actually know, because we, we actually work with a lot of the banks in the region as well. So if a card is about to expire, you actually get a notification so that you can prompt your user to update their card information. And this is essentially it. So if you want to get started, uh, simply just go to braintreedevelopers.com. You can sign up for a sandbox account, which is free, and you get approved immediately. So you can have access to all the APIs that I'm showing you today. And we have a very easy getting started guide. So it's basically four steps. Uh, well, two steps. Set up your client, uh, which I just showed you on the iOS. Or if you're writing a different map, uh, a different app, mobile app or a web app, you can do that as well. And then on the server side, you select your language that you're working with. And we have all the code samples that you can just easily copy and paste and actually test it out uh, before you actually integrate or before you go live with your Braintree account. And when, you're going, when you are ready and you're ready to go live, you just need to send us, drop us an email and let us know, and we'll convert your Sandbox account into a production account, and you can start using the service. And that is basically all I have. Um, if you have any questions, feel, feel free to ask now, or I'll be here the rest of the night as well if you want to go in more detail. But this was more, uh, more, more of like an overview for all of you. Yeah. I'm um, just wondering when would the marketplace feature be available? Yeah, so yeah. for those yeah, for those who uh, are not familiar, marketplace is basically a model where you can pay out your customers. Um, if you're say you're building a platform like Uber or Airbnb, and your users, you're, you're, you basically have two sets of users, right? You have the users and service providers who are exchanging services, and you're just like a middleman. Um, and Marketplace is an API that allows you to do uh, things like this where you can take um, a transaction from a user, like say for Airbnb they take $100 for the rental, and you take a service fee and you pass the rest to a sub-account, what we call a sub-merchant, which is all your service providers. Now this Marketplace feature is available in the US, but not yet anywhere else. Um, we don't have a timeline yet on when it's available, but the solution we sort of recommend to developers or merchants who want to use this type of uh, feature is to accept, their, accept payments using Braintree, and you can use uh, PayPal mass, pay, mass APIs where you can just automate um, dispersing your funds to a PayPal account. Now, that puts a requirement for your sub-merchants to have a PayPal account, so you can disperse funds through that, but that's really the best way you can go about it if you don't want to do it manually which is like giving, like transferring money to your service providers. Um, so we don't have a timeline yet, going back to your question, uh, for this part of the world. But we are definitely working on that. And uh, in the US, how you maintain the chargebacks? Yeah, so... Especially for the marketplace. Because if you have a chargeback, then automatically you have to take back also the money from the account. Yeah. So, the, so on a simple case, it's actually very similar, uh, marketplace or simple payments. The chargeback is, of course, uh, initiated by the user. So if the user is not, uh, if anyone's not familiar with the term, if, say, you're selling something to a user and the user finds that the product is broken and they want a refund, um, so that's when a chargeback uh, comes back where you're, based, you're notified by Braintree that you have, um, you've, accepted money where you, like the customer has gone for a refund, right? So you have the option to fight for the case if you can provide evidence or documentation in saying that you did provide the product and it was in good condition, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Braintree will be actually the one who, is who would investigate on the case 
to have the ultimate decision to see who wins. Um, so it's, it's basically you, uh, the user raising the case and then you trying to provide documentation um, on your behalf to see. The problem is that if you don't have an API in place, you have the situation that you may lose your chargeback and you cannot recover the money from the PayPal because you have done uh, mass payment and yeah. you have a problem how to go and get the money back. Also, so Marketplace has that already in there, but in this part of the world, yes. So it's basically, it's like, it's a two-way problem because you're basically separating this whole feature into two processes. Um, and if the chargeback happens on the PayPal side, then you're going to have to work with the vendor um, alone to get the money back. Um, at this point, yeah, like that's the, really the best you could do. So yeah, like going back to you, Marketplace would raise this new obstacle here as well. Yes. Is there a feature in the Singapore context uh, to remember the credit card that is already linked with the user? Yeah, yeah. So it's not, it's not based on Singapore. Like it's a, it's a feature that's available worldwide. Um, so in addition to just storing credit cards, so all the credit cards are stored on the branch revolt. And whenever you need a payment method, you come and tell us um, for which customer you need it. And then we will provide you with the nonce, the nonce again. And you can use that nonce to ch create another charge. Uh, for this to work, you'll have to use, you can actually store customer information in our database as well. So when you're creating a new payment method, you just assign it an ID. Say you have a customer ID like one, two, three, and you want to assign the snots to it. The next time you see that the customer is, com is returning, obviously the ID is tied to your own account management system as well. If the, when the user comes back and you know that the customer ID is 123, you just come to us and you say you want to retrieve payment methods for this customer ID and we'll give you all the payment methods that have been set up by the user. And then you can select which one to charge, or you can even display it to the user and let them select which, if they have more than one payment method set up, which credit card or which PayPal account to use. Yeah. And in terms of payment methods, we, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be like a one-stop shop for all the different payment methods that are out there. So currently, we, in this region here, we support uh, PayPal credit cards, um, in US, we support Apple Pay, Android Pay, and Vemo as well. And so all of the integration is already done on the back end. And once Apple Pay and Android Pay makes their way across to Asia, as a merchant, if you're already on board with Braintree, you simply, actually, you simply go to our dashboard, and you can select uh, what payment methods to enable. So here you can see that um, I can say disable Vemo or enable Vemo or enable Apple Pay. And you just need to set up your Apple ID credentials. And without even any changes on the UI side of things, without any code changes on the client side, that drop in that you saw, there would be an additional button that says you can log in with Apple Pay with Vemo. Um, so, but right now in Singapore, the only options are PayPal and credit cards. Credit cards, it's the Visa, Amex, MasterCard. MasterCard. Is this a big yes. So, um, this is based on uh, transaction. So it's a very, very simple uh, business model. So per transaction in Singapore, it's 3.4% it's plus 50 cents SGD. Um, it's different across regions. So the best way to check is just through our website. Uh, but the price is also volume based. So if you have a large amount of transactions, then the price would obviously be lower as well. Um, and this is something that you would, when you're onboarding with us, you would discuss with the team uh, because it's different depending on the nature of your business because it's also based on like other factors like risk um, and transaction volume um, and the actual nature of the business, like what kind of business are you doing as well. Um, so, but the pricing that we have on the website is basically like the ballpark baseline kind of thing. Yes. Is it possible to do partial uh, reinvestment, so to speak, right? Uh, you can do uh, so. Par you can do partial capturing. So when a credit card charge happens, um, if you've been to hotels, the they always um, ask you to authorize right your credit card for like five hundred dollars, and if something happens, they can capture the money. So that's that's the two step process like the authorization capture and you can do that with Braintree as well. So you can you can authorize an X amount of dollars within uh, for a particular payment method and you can capture amounts as many times as you want. So you don't have to do it all at once. You can do it, it's kind of like a credit 
kind of um, credit-based uh, system. So you can take, you can capture amounts from that $500 anytime you'd like. Yeah. So is the 3.5 based on two transactions? Yes, it's based on transactions. So everything is based on tra transactions. So if you split that $500 into like $1 transactions, then it would be quite costly. <laughs> Cool. So again, I'll be here for the rest of the day. So if you feel feel free to come and just chat with me if you'd like. And I think I'll pass it on to Justin now.